Right, it's January 17th, 2024, and I am super excited because tonight my buddy Bill is going to measure this drop time buck. If you've been following along, you have seen the hunt already on this buck, and it really was a, a shot, a, a redemption type hunt. Uh, you know, I had the, the scenario where I had a perfect shot at him, and the crossbow limbs had hit the camera arm down post shattered the string on the, the crossbow and the camera falls all the way to the ground and this buck I thought walked out of my life forever you know he's probably gonna be nocturnal or certainly I would shoot him if I was gonna get him it'd be out of a different stand or something with all that commotion but that's the beauty of the rut less than a week he comes to the same scrapes to work on ground him right in and, and get that shot and real blessing from the Lord I would say too <laughs> absolutely absolutely so uh, we're just past the 60 day drying period uh, which is a requirement if you want a dry is that what you refer to dry score an official score an official score yeah. from commemorative box of Michigan my buddy Bill if you've been following along you've already seen him he's been very instrumental up at the property in fact where I shot this buck and helping us with habitat management and managing that land to better the deer hunting and I've seen uh, great results from that. So really appreciate that, but also the fact that you're a Commemorative Bucks of Michigan scorer. Yep, official measurer for Commemorative Bucks. Yeah, so Bill tonight is gonna measure uh, this buck as well as the tom that I shot in the 2023 spring turkey hunt. And uh, Bill's gonna kinda walk us through how this whole, you know, some background for number one on uh, CBM, but then also, you know, what what all kind of goes into measuring these animals. Thanks, Ben. Bill Emery, I'm with uh, just measure in Ottawa County for Commemorative Bucks of Michigan. CBM was started in the early 80s. We're recognized through state law, officially in the legislature as being the official record keepers for the state of Michigan which I think is kind of unique and sort of interesting that they, somebody saw this as being valuable enough that they chose to proceed through and put it into the, put it into the legal law that we're the official record keepers. We produce a, a buck facts on a yearly basis, which gives all the kill records. This happens to just be an old historical one I had kicking around from 2019, but we produce this once a year, and this has all the kill records, county by county, broke down and basically ranked from the 2019 season. And the way this has worked to the, into the permanent record book throughout the years is then every three years, the buck facts information gets downloaded into the permanent record book. And this is a compilation. This book here is the 10th edition, but we've printed through the 12th and we're working on the 13th. Um, this basically again breaks down county by county and it also includes, it's not just the whitetails, but we also keep records on turkey, elk, and bear. Now that's a little bit of a background on what CBM is. We're just the record keepers for the state of Michigan. And obviously, being that whitetail hunting is such a big deal here in our state, we measure a lot of whitetail deer. Probably, I probably measure, 75% of what I measure is, is whitetail deer. Uh, this this year has been too interesting though I've, I've measured two elk this year which is that's also really interesting to see the Michigan elk come through and it's really rare because in the years I've been measuring I think I've measured total I've measured six or seven okay. and I've measured two already this year but basically what we're going to do is just start on could have had a little of this done in advance but basically what we do when we first start with a rack is we put some tape on our cutoff points and it's an effort to not leave lines on people's racks. Back in the early days of CBM they didn't go through this step. <laughs> <laughs> but we're basically avoiding putting any lines on the rack itself as we go through this process. What I'm going to do, the system we use is the same system that Pope and Young uses, it gives the deer credit for main beam length, inside spread, 
parallel to the skull cap. So if you have a mis misshapen set of antlers, I can't pull a crazy angle with my tape, but I can. I have to go parallel to the uh, base of the antlers in order to get the inside spread. We get the main beam, we get the, the tine length, and then we get four circumferences. And it's just a simple mathematical equation. In order to make bow kill, or in this case crossbow kill, in Michigan, they need to be 100 inches. And we are going to set out the process here of uh, getting some measurements here. This cable I'm using is actually, in its original form, was just a bike cable. This has become sort of the official tool for putting lines on, putting lines on racks, and also for using for transferring links on tines. My goal is I'm going to put a pencil mark as if that main beam carried right on through and that'll be the termination point for where we measure to when we measure that time, that point. So we'll do this process, in this case, six times. Then on an eight point, we'll take, put one more mark on the eight point to give us where our fourth circumference comes from. I'll explain that here in just a minute. It's been a pretty busy year 2023. We've I've measured quite a few deer at home this year. Yeah, it's been a pretty good season I think for guys. A lot of nice bucks. I think we're starting to see some of the benefits of the guys letting them grow a little bit. I think we're harvesting some nicer bucks pretty consistently over the last several years. And then what I'm going to do is just find the center point on each one of them lines. And when I measure that point that will be the that will be the termination. We're going to put one more piece of tape on this rack because it's an eight point rack. We get, go ahead. What's the journey look like to become a official scorer? We're actually, you know, especially in counties where we're short on measures and either looking on, looking on the uh, CBM website, you can figure out what counties we don't have measures for. You contact our scoring chairman. We have a scoring chairman on the board of directors. Okay. His information would be in the buck facts or on the, now everything's on the internet. Um, his information would be there. We um, do a training class usually about once a year. Okay. We have one I think this year coming up in April. Okay. I think that one's full. We usually try to train nine to 12 guys out of that. Our experience has been we usually get seven or eight nine that will will follow up we'll do this class and do the there's some homework after the fact and we ask guys to commit to being involved in a professional business-like manner when they when they're contacted after the fact you know there's not as many trade shows and stuff going on today as there used to be yeah. um so there's not as much not as many opportunities to measure at, at shows but that's still a really good training that's that i learned a lot i gained a lot of confidence when I could go measure 10 deer in a single day and then do it with guys that have been measuring for 10, 15, 20 years right there with me that could, you know, I could ask questions of. Sure. So basically it's a one day training class, some follow up stuff so that just so that the, usually the regional directors get involved at that point to determine whether or not the return test that you have to take, if you pass that, then they'll put you forward to the board for a, to become a measurer. And again, counties, if you look on the website, counties where we're short on measures are more critical, obviously, than counties where we might have three or four measures already. Um, but we're always accepting volunteers. Sure. Okay. So I put a 
another piece of tape out on this on these on this eight. We're gonna get our fourth circumference. When I talk about circumferences, we get one between the what we call the burr and the brow tine, brow tine and G G2, G3, and then we get the fourth circumference out here halfway to the tip. From this point here, halfway to the tip. I'll pull a tape on there and I'll put a line on there and that'll indicate where our fourth circumference will come from. Let's see. My goal here is to get halfway running down the center of the beam from that tip. Just get the halfway point. And for our purposes here, that halfway point looks like about four and an eighth. So I'm going to put a pencil mark right there. When I measure that, that's, that establishes a set point where I measure that circumference on that fourth one there. We're going to do the same thing on this side. This is kind of interesting because this would be, if this was off the top of the point, it would be considered a hint of a point. I don't need to go into that right now, but that would then allow me to just measure in between here and here. But that one's, that would be an abnormal, and I don't think is an abnormal, it counts as the hint of a point. So we're going to repeat the same process here. Seven is three and a half. Three and five eighths is where that fourth circumference is going to come from on this one. Next piece of it here, we'll do use the old bike cable again. I'm going to hook that on the bottom side of what we call the burr. And I'm going to go for the center of the beam, towards the back of the beam initially, and hold that. I want to hold that consistently in place as I run up the center of the beam. Now we'll delete our clip here. Get it in place. Verify my verify my attachment point. Kind of look again to make sure I'm center of beam. That's going to be our right hand main beam link. And we have a pretty straightforward score sheet. All the different organizations out there that measure white tails all have different score sheets but of all the ones I've looked at I think CBMs is to me seems pretty simple maybe it's just because it's the one I'm used to but basically I'm going to use the old carpenter ruler here and I'll just pull that out and give him credit for if it's over the halfway point or over the sixteenth, he gets credit to the next full eighth of an inch. So in this case, it'll be seventeen and an eighth for the right main beam. Next, we just repeat the same process on the left hand side. My goal where I hook this cable on is to just to center underneath the burr as if I was going to, if I drilled a hole through there that I was going to be 180 degrees on both sides. So my goal is always to try to hook 180 degrees opposite of where I hooked the last one. How long have you been measuring for? I started measuring in 2012. I was involved with CBM for a couple years prior to that. Used to be you almost had to get, you almost had to get, sort of had to get sponsored in. You had to improve if you were interested in being involved in advance of being invited to consider whether you wanted to be a measurer. Okay. 
So I helped with a lot of the shows, the Deer and Turkey Spectacular, Outdoor Ram over in Novi. You know, there used to be more trade shows that we represented at CBM at. So we're 17 and three on the left. We measure everything to the closest eighth of an inch. So you hear me saying three, that means 17 inches and 17 and three eighths inches. The next measurement that I'm going to do is the inside spread. <coughs> Again, based on what I said earlier, I'm obligated to try to take a measurement center of the beam and as close to parallel to the skull as I can make it. And I Certainly always try to give a deer credit for all the legitimate lengths we can give. So we're 7, 12, and 4 eighths inches inside spread. There's actually a Every once in a while we'll measure one that's freakishly wide and in that case the uh, longest main beam becomes the inside spread and again it's just the way the system was set up but in this case we're certainly going to use the 12 and 4 eighths. Um, nothing unique or different about that but there's a kind of a sideline rule there that I didn't go into but it's included in the score sheet. Okay. Next we're going to do time length. And my goal is to try to hit as close to center as I can down the beam. And he's got one of all times four and seven eighths inches. It's the right hand side first. Seven and seven eighths. Seven and zero. So I've had people ask me, why don't you come measure that one? The length of that point's already been measured when we measured the main beam. Sure. These uh, brow points on this little on this buck are they've got a little extra swerve and wiggle to them. If I was Measuring the new state record, Ben, I'd probably have my cable out for this, but <laughs> my, my quarter inch <laughs> tape, my quarter, my quarter inch tape does a good job on a four and seven eighths. The bike cable makes that sachet a little bit less complicated than doing it with a steel tape. Sure. The quarter inch steel tape, by the way, is the regulation tool for this job, so 8 and 4. And part of the idea is, is that a quarter inch steel tape, number one, you can't stretch it no matter how hard you pull on it, and number two, if you get a buck that has a lot of gnarling, what we call gnarling down around the burrs, your first circumference will reflect that when you measure it, 5 and 4. In this case, this buck, on the right hand side, he doesn't have any what we consider abnormal points. A normal point is considered a point that comes off the top of the main beam, so these are all normal. These are normal. In this case, this buck has one what would be considered an abnormal. This guy here won't measure, but this one here will measure. So we'll do one left hand through the same process we did with the ones on top. I already have a line on there. And this is Ben's drift point. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think he's really cool. Yeah. Really cool buck. One and three eighths left hand beam. I'm 
getting a shoulder mount done of them and he's going to have a very hard right turn so that drip tine will be facing <laughs> outward. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> oh. So we have our tine links. The next piece of the puzzle here is we'll just do the circum we'll do the circumferences and I have another tape measure here that just has a loop on the end of it that I measure circumferences with. And probably one of the most common errors done by folks that are measuring their own is in this case I have to consider the smallest point <laughs> oh, the smallest the largest, point huh? not the largest <laughs> and that's probably when I when I have guys come in and they pre-measured them and they have an idea what they are I would guess that probably 50% of the time is maybe because they went for the largest point <laughs> three, three and three eighths between there, three and zero. Scoot that tag aside, I'm confident we can get an accurate measurement with that tag. Just scoot it aside a little bit. This is a Northern Kent County buck. Have you measured any of those this, this year already? Any Kent County bucks? Just trying to think as you say that. I've measured three bucks. I don't think I've measured any Kent County bucks this year at all, northern or otherwise. I think uh, Allegan County, um, Nuego County. And a guy, I have a, a gentleman that showed up last week and I three and zero. He's actually entered six bucks in the last six, seven seasons. Wow. He had two the other night. And he's obviously a, he's obviously an accomplished whitetail yep. hunter and he, and he hunts state land. No kidding. Wow. <laughs> Probably wouldn't care for me to tell what county. <laughs> but no, um, Sheboygan County, Nuego, Ottawa. I've measured a couple from Ottawa County. I'm a measure in Zealand, Michigan, so Ottawa County is kind of home base. Three and two. I measured one last night or the other night from uh, St. Joseph County. Oh, that's sure. So kind of all over the map. circumference on that one. Three and five. And that last measurement out on the tip. Two and seven. We have uh, a, sp a spot on the score sheet just for additional identifiers that we just take a couple extra pieces of data. We just count the points on the rack on the right beam one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter if they're what we consider normal points or abnormal points. This one here has got five, so we're one, two, three, four, five. On the left beam, We do a tip to tip and an outside spread. These these measurements don't add to or subtract from the the point. These are just additional identifiers. If there was ever to be a question, you know, I don't know in this case well, what would ever generate a question, but if there was ever a question as to who killed this deer or if we had them a bunch of them together and we got some of them mixed up, we'd have some additional identifiers to help identify them. Sure. So the outside spread on this one will include that that drop, and he's 15 exactly outside. 
and then we do a just do a quick tip to tip measurement again these measurements don't add anything to or take anything from the score itself that's so interesting he's even again at six inches tip to tip from there it's just a simple case of doing the math the system's been in place for a lot of years it gives credit for symmetry so there are and don't shoot the messenger I know some folks just aren't that excited about um, the deductions but it's just <laughs> part of the system <laughs> it's just the system I didn't make up the system um, and it's the system that's been in place for a lot of years for a minute there I didn't think my calculator was going to do my math for me so between the two beams we have a 17 and 3 and we 17 and 1 so there's a 2 eighths deduction between the two beams the points raw times were exactly the same 0 and 0 there 5 eighths difference in the G2's and we have we have one and four eighths between the G3s. So we're one and two and one eighth is the deduction on the points. My little calculator just has enough light here to do what I want it to do for me. So we're doing maths by eighths of an inch which means doing the decimal equivalents and then switching them back. 19 and 6. Total on the right beam. Eighteen and seven eighths on the left. What kind of shrinkage do you typically see between a green score and one that's dry? Do they shrink a lot or? One of our previous presidents, we were really anti doing green scores a few years ago. So we had to give, we gave one of our previous presidents of the free lease to do a study. And Mike's a highly qualified academic. And he did a study and he, what they figured is somewhere between two and 4% okay so it's not the idea that we want to get the smallest score we just like to get a score that's consistent yeah so you know between two and four percent a hundred inch buck you know that could be two to four inches on a hundred inches yeah. so it's 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 really fairly significant and the goal of the 60-day drying period is just so we measure them all within this and obviously we measure some that are way older than that and some of them yeah. you know and now we've now we actually allow for a green score if a person wants to you know, wants to pay the membership up front whether it makes the book or not we've lightened that up a little bit and we'll actually do a green score for people now but in, where we've always measured for free in the past there's actually a membership fee to get it entered in the book and if you want a green score we ask for that up front because what would happen plenty often enough in the past was they'd get a green score and we'd never see them back to get an official score and sure I, the only way I can give somebody an official score is to have that 60-day dry period in there so. right on well it's pretty hot above that TV and that's where he's been <laughs> for the last 60 days he probably dried out a little extra I think <laughs> uh, I've had guys tell me that they had them stored on top of the above the mantle on the fireplace and all kinds of places, but it's probably not where you want to keep them <laughs> for 60 days. 12, 12 and 5 eighths. Leave them in the bathtub of water. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, I've seen all kinds of other extremes. You know, some guys will keep them in the freezer and froze and bring them with a hide in the whole nine yards. And technically, I'm not supposed, again, technically, when that's the case, I'm not supposed to measure them because they are supposed to be. They are supposed to be defleshed and had some time to just kind of stabilize. Yeah. Um, I'm not, again, that's just the way the system has always been. 
So we have 12 and 5 eighths on, in circumferences on the left beam and we have 12 and 6 eighths on the other side. deductions on a circumference. We have one we have one abnormal at one and three eighths and we're going to measure him as a typical so that one and three eighths unfortunately becomes a deduction as well. 17. So Amy and I we were up at deer camp uh, the new deer camp I had bought up in the UP uh, over New Year's. We did a live broadcast, we're just kind of giving an update, and I hadn't guessed a score on them yet, but in that video I guessed 110 was, I was going to try and take a crack at it, just to even. Well, I'm pretty confident in my math, but give me half a minute here, if I could just push these buttons right a yeah. couple more times, I'll have the... I'll have an official here for you. And we had plenty of other uh, guesses, so we're definitely going to... I'm not sure what we're going to give away, but we're going to give away something to whoever's closest. Big deal on this deer is he had... He's a beautiful buck all the way around, but he had, he had really good... He had really good... His greatest asset measuring is he was quite symmetrical. And he... Uh, at good time length. Hmm. So we have a gross score of 111 even. Okay. So if you guessed 110, you were awfully close. Just gotta throw those deductions in there though, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We gotta uh, what did I say earlier about <laughs> don't kill the don't kill the messenger. And just the messenger. Uh, so He's officially 106 and 7 eighths. Wow. And he makes Michigan book uh, for bow and for crossbow is 100 inches. So he's officially a Michigan commemorative bucks trophy buck. All right. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> Congratulations, yeah. man. Yeah. That's a big deal. Thank you. <laughs> That's yeah. a big deal. That's exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> I've hunted a long time and I've not shot a lot of them to make the book. I've shot a couple of them that were really close for gun and I've shot, I actually have one, is, you know, if I have one that officially made the book and he's 105 eighths. So, hey, okay. you got a little room spare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm tickled. I, I had a hunch he would break that 100 inch mark and I remember you had uh, taken a look at the Manitoba buck just for giggles, not nothing for Michigan, but just throwing a tape on it for fun and I thought, you know, you told me, I can't remember what he was, somewhere around that 110 mark though, so I thought, well, look at this time length and the length of the beams and all that, I bet you he's in the neighborhood. He's a real world, he's a real world Michigan buck, man. Yeah. You're, you're very proud of that. Mm -hmm. Awesome, exciting. Good deal, eh? So we we can probably pull these tapes later. Yep. Um, if you want to go right on into doing that turkey, yeah. one, is that what you thought? Yeah, if we could, if we could do the turkey next. Yeah, absolutely. Then. So the turkeys are really a real simple process where I needed all the numbers on a, on a on the white tail for the turkey. It's just the combination of the length of the longest feather in the beard. I mean, longest, so literally the longest hair. And I start at the base of the kernel with my tape. Um, and I'm going to do that a minute. It's the beard and the combination of the beard and the... Um, two spurs. And uh, Michigan gun. I'm going to get down here on one knee to do this just because it'll be a little easier for me. Yep. Um, Michigan gun in order to make the book 
they have to be over 12 inches and it's to the nearest 16th so we have we have 9 and 9 sixteenths and then we just get the spurs the right ones listed first and go for the this is where I'll use my bike cable again just because it'll make it easier for me to transfer the exact point. I run the tip of my bike cable all the way to the point. Is, is there a dry period for turkey? There's not. Um, I, I don't know the reason why the difference. Um, there's not a lot of... I don't, I don't know. I, I would think. I guess I'm not an expert on how... How many folks actually measure turkeys for a trophy book? Yep. Um, one of the things that's a little bit unique about CBM is the fact that we do give credit to the turkey as being one of our big game animals. And it certainly is, as far as available hunting goes, it certainly gives a lot of people in our state the opportunity to hunt. Yeah. Um, The amount of turkey in Michigan is just crazy now versus, well, as a kid, I mean, it was very rare to hear of anybody, you know, harvesting a turkey or even having turkeys around. I grew up in Ottawa County and we didn't see them. See, I lived in Ottawa County probably 20, 20 years, I bet, before we heard our first gobble or saw any sign of a turkey. Interesting little bit, bit of history. We moved to the to Osceola County when I was 12 years old, which would have been 1976. Okay. And that, that for me was a really big deal when we moved from down here in Ottawa County to Osceola County up north to see the turkeys because the turkeys were already prevalent in the okay in the you know they were draw tags in the late 70s, but by the and there were still draw tags for a long time, but the opportunity for turkey hunting in the northern part of the state was there considerably sooner than it was down here, but now okay. there's turkeys everywhere. Yeah. I have a couple places where I deer hunt actually, where they're almost beyond being well populated. They're almost a, nu <laughs> a nuisance. <laughs> I hate to say it, but they're almost a nuisance. <laughs> you yeah. know, yep. they're really hard on the plots. They're really hard on, the, yeah, they're just, they're, they're really, really thick, and I shouldn't say that because I know guys that love to hunt them don't certainly yeah. see it that way at all, but yeah, they're quite prevalent. So we had one and five sixteenths on the first side we measured, the right side. Measure the left one. It's kind of unusual that there'd be that much difference in them, but there's one and two sixteenths on the other, and it's simply a case of the math. He's 12 inches exactly, Ben. Oh, no. <laughs> 12 and 0. No oh, deductions with this. No one. deductions with that one. And he actually, he just made, he just makes the, just makes it. So yeah, he's 60, yep. Yeah. They gotta be 12 to make the book. They gotta be 12 to make the book. So you got two book entries right there. All right. One white tail, one turkey. Ooh. Congratulations. It's very Thank cool. You. Very so cool. Now, that's lots of fun. Well, it's been a, a good year. You know, it's hunting. You, you have those years that are really good, and we get those years that are dry spells and rough, but that's what kind of makes it all great. You know, if you just show up and get the biggest every time and that, it's just, I don't think it'd be the same, you know. Though there's years I wouldn't mind a little gimme. <laughs> I would say this past year I definitely felt that. I just really was lost with the harvest, but, you know, if, I'm no stranger to dry years too, you know. <laughs> the time in the field, to appreciate the time, you know, God's creation and the time in the field to me, there's, you know, an October morning when there's frost gone, the, then the sun's breaking the horizon in all the colors, especially in October of archery hunting. There is nothing like that watch, you know, especially in our northern Michigan where we have the yellows and the reds, the maples and the browns of the, I mean, it's just, to me, that's, that's a big deal, but we had a, a decent season. I didn't shoot any great big trophies, but I put a bunch of meat in the freezer. 
and I did take a, I took a buck that uh, should have been an eight, but he was broke off on one side. I knew that when I shot him. Maybe I should be more focused on antlers. I grew up old school. <laughs> You know why you shot them? Because you wanted them. I shot them. And you so, bought that license. So yep, no. Business. You know, we have a new piece of property we're working with up north. We put a bunch of food plots in. We have a lot invested in it. And we and we have and, and we have some other, we certainly have a bunch of small. We passed a lot of deer. Yep. Yeah, we just had a good year. Just yep. a good year. Love the time in the woods. So. And that's a new piece of property to you and your brother. Right? Yeah, yep, yep. Pretty excited about that 80 acres. And if we put some hay fields on it for this old boy. He let it, gave us some hunting rights. Well, and food plots is part of what I do for a living. So I have the planters and the equipment. My brother and I both have tractors and trucks. Pretty smooth deal. And we have a lot of, we have a lot of fun together in the woods, so. Yeah, no doubt you guys know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. That's part of it we enjoy too, it's cra crazy as it is. But yeah, we, we did, we had a lot of fun and we saw a lot of deer and, uh, Took a piece that last year we hunted a couple times. We saw a couple deer. We did actually harvest two does off it last year, we, but we didn't see that many deer. To sometimes we had hunts and sets this fall where we were seeing 12, 15 deer in a single set. So that's a pretty amazing deal to take an old piece of rough ground that doesn't have any food on it in a single season. Um, yeah, we're excited about the future with that. So that's awesome. And uh, you, besides myself and and yourselves. Uh, you have other uh, private landowners that you've consulted with and, and helped them kind of reach their dreams and goals, right? Yes, absolutely. We, um, I was just talking with one of my, we have properties now, we have properties in four states that we take care of, Iowa, uh, Illinois, Indiana, and here in Michigan. And uh, our, our Iowa piece this year, I didn't get any pictures from the guys, but I was talking to one of them this morning and they actually, they took four real dandies off of that property this year. Um, they were right in the middle of where that derecho storm hit a few years ago. And the theory is all the torn up trees in the woods is kind of like hinge cutting and the habitats Ooh, improved. Yeah. And one step further, they claim that the guys that used to push hunt that all the time aren't hunting it as much because it's just almost impossible to get through the woods. That storm, it blew for six hours, over 40 miles an hour, and the clock's wind speeds there up to 115 miles an hour. And it, was in, it was in farm country, so the woods were just decimated. Um, so, but they had a really good year down there. One of our Indiana, our real nice buck off of one of our Illinois properties, real nice buck off our Indiana properties. And these guys, they're not shooting them unless they're 150s or better, you know? So yeah. to say that they only took one off each of those two properties doesn't mean they weren't successful. It's just they have really high standards. Right. So, yeah, um, yeah, we enjoy that process as well. That's incredible. And you're actually hauling some of your heavy equipment out there and yep. everything, right? Yeah, yeah. we just take planters and tractors and in some cases it's shared equipment that the that's, that the homeowner, that the landowner has. Um, we always travel with our own equipment. I, sometimes it's a challenge to, I can't be committed to somebody else's stuff. I know my equipment isn't brand new, but I know what I've got when I've yeah. got mine. Yeah. And I've run into trouble when I don't transport my own equipment. So we haul our own gear. Yeah, sure. So. Understandable. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming Congratulations over. again, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited. Ooh. Awesome. That's a big deal. Exciting. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'll take a look on uh, the different platforms that everyone's guesses and see who came closest on the we didn't do anything uh, turkey wise, and maybe I'll even cut some of this out and do a, some kind of giveaway on that. But as far as the uh, drip time buck here, we landed at, with deductions, That's official. Yeah, <laughs> officially, 106 and 7 eighths as the uh, official score. Awesome. So congratulations to whoever uh, was closest there. And thanks again, Bill. Really appreciate it. And I cannot wait to see this buck uh, complete on my wall, shoulder mounted. Uh, it's going to be a great memory to look at, you know, year over year. Like you said, with that being a whole, having the redemption story, it just is like that much better for me. I mean, we, we don't get too many of those <laughs> in our hunting time. So, yeah, this buck was destined to be mine.